Anthony Magnell. Uh, too embarrassing to the right honourable member, can I say how sorry we are to see him return to the backbenches because he has been a fastidious voice on fishing and has been a champion of coastal communities, of course, specifically um, across the whole of the country, but also in Devon. Um, and I, for one, will welcome the fact that he'll be on the backbenches and able to work with me in supporting coastal communities, not least in the southwest, but what more we can do for the fishing community. And I totally agree with the fact that we should have an annual debate on fisheries and perhaps uh, in, a, in an example of cross party unitary, I'm, uh, unity, I'm sure we can find a way in which we can make that happen. Um, and the second point I wanted to just add to the, to the words that he just mentioned, which was uh, we should also pay thanks to the independent lifeboats um, who aren't part of the RNLI, and I'm in the process of setting up an independent lifeboat association, which he may like to lend his support to. And, sec and thirdly, that uh, I'm also working on an aquaculture APPG to specifically address uh, the points around live bivalve mollusks, because it's too broad just to have a fisheries APPG, because there are clearly opportunities for what we can do within the LBM sector and within, indeed, the shellfish sector. Um, Madam Chair, it is a pleasure to be able to speak in this debate, and I congratulate the Honourable Gentleman from Strangford for securing it. As ever, he gives a unique perspective on the difficulties faced by Northern Ireland, but he also has been able to emphasise the fact that fishing across the United Kingdom has a particular opportunity to be able to be improved, to enlarge, to expand, to grow, and to be an industry that is worth a great deal more than it is, and that the opportunity lies with DEFRA. Of course, within my own constituency, I have Brixham, Solcombe, and Dartmouth, and I'm very proud of them as fishing communities, and I was very proud a few weeks ago to spend 24 hours um, at sea on a Brixham trawler, doing two hours on, two hours off, and I tell you, Madam Chair, they made me work for it. But it was, a, it was an extraordinary insight into the skill that is required to be a fisher in the, the, in the UK and the risks that are taken and indeed the hard work that goes into it. I have to say, while I don't believe the Brexit deal is a botched Brexit deal, I believe that it's provided a great deal of opportunity. In fact, when I talk to my fishermen, I think I've only met one fisherman in Brixham who has regretted us leaving the European Union, and in fairness, he's been quite quiet of late. I think it is important to remember that there are some positives to be mentioned here. 25% of existing EU quota will be transfer, uh, transferred to the UK over the next five and a half years, with an estimated uplift of £27 million, making the, uh, making the total £333 million. And of course, there's also the specific percentage agreed for existing fish stock. And after the transition period, and I do want to come on to this because I think DEFRA can add a great deal more clarity as to where we go beyond June the 30th, 2026, after uh, the transition period, we'll be able to negotiate total allowable catch on each of the 87 stocks uh, that are mentioned in Fish Annex 1 and 2. And of course, I mentioned in, in, in my intervention to the Honourable Gentleman from Strangford, the creation of a specialised committee on fisheries is very well, is particularly welcome, and the fact that it'll be meeting three to five times a year. But again, I'd like to come on to that in a second. There is undoubtedly an uplift, and undoubtedly there have also been a broad brush approach in applying this to the whole of the United Kingdom, and that comes with its own problems. Um, however, today's debate does offer definitely and the Minister the chance to reassure the fishing community that we are going to address the, the areas in which the fishing community feels most aggrieved. The first, of course, has already been mentioned, is the six to 12 mile limit. Um, this is perhaps the most egregious of the compromises made around fishing, and it is particularly well felt. I have to say, last uh, two weeks ago, we had a French vessel that we were all tracking in Solcombe that came, we believe, and I, I'm cautionary in saying this, that we believe came within our six to 12 mile, came within our six mile limit, and indeed did a great deal of destruction to a whole load of sulk and crab pods. The response was to go through the MMO to report it. Nothing has been heard by my Sulcombe fishermen from the MMO. There's clearly something at, at odds here. But on the point about the 6 to 12 mile limit, we have the opportunity after the transition period to be very clear about what we want for that, for that area. And I really ask DEFRA now to start talking about its intentions. I used to be a negotiator in shipping, and I understand that you don't want to reveal your hand. But it is important to be able to give the clarity that we are going to go forward and ensure that that 6 to 12 mile limit becomes UK only, which is what was expected before the deal, and in fact was a great surprise to those who didn't. In fact, many of my uh, fishermen in Dartmouth, Solcombe and Brixham also made the point that their counterparts in France couldn't believe that we had given away that uh, that. that 
part of the deal. Um, as, al as has already been said by my honourable friend, for the member for Weaveney, super trawlers, fly shooters are seen off the coast of the United Kingdom, and we have said that we wanted to deal with super trawlers. We have to be able to make sure that we're de dealing with this, and there is no greater image of us having let down elements of the fishing community than seeing those vessels. So let's be clear about what we want post-June 2026. Um, the second is around the money. It is welcome that £100 million has been put forward, and I, I think that it's shown the commitment, and I know that the Minister feels passionate about what the levelling up fund can do as well as helping coastal communities. So it's not just 100 million, it's plus the 4.8 billion that's in the levelling up fund. Um, it's great Pillar 1 has been announced, but I am quite tired of having to repeatedly ask where Pillar 2 and 3 are going to come. And I also recognise that the Treasury controls this, and I'm not blaming them and I'm not blaming the Minister. But what I am saying is that a great deal of hopes are pinned on that money and the infrastructure, the development that could be had to help expand the fleets, to help build more um, uh, uh, boats in the United Kingdom and to retrofit them and to repair them and to train people to come into the industry. These are really important areas in which actually we can help grow the fleet and the industry overall. Um, so can I just ask when we're going to have those pillars two and three um, and how, uh, how quickly we might be able to um, uh, expand and apply for them. Uh, the third point was actually around the Specialised Committee on Fisheries. Um, it is particularly welcome that the Trade Cooperation Agreement has outlined the different committees committees, including just in relation to live bivalve mollusks, the one on SPS. Um, these committees, though, are still marred in a little bit of secrecy and, um, and uh, uh, sort of opaqueness, if I'm allowed to put it that way. Um, the last meeting of the SCF was on the 27th of February. The only information I can find available, and I'm very happy to be wrong on this, is the agenda. Um, our fishing communities across the whole of the United Kingdom need to understand what is what is discussed in those meetings, how they can input and how we can ensure that it's not just the agenda that we're feeding into, but how we're also getting the response so we can have the understanding that we are discussing the problems and trying to find the solutions, as the Honourable Member Sir Strangford so rightly said. Um, it's also said that between three and five times a year this group is going to meet. Well, I just hope that um, uh, the Minister might be able to be a little bit more specific as to when. It is important that we have stuck-in-stone dates uh, and to ensure that we are uh, meeting on the right places. Um, I've taken up far too much time, and I just want to say that the opportunity is there. We know that uh, places like Brixham can make a great deal of money. In fact, they're having one of the most successful years on record at the moment. That's clearly not the case across the whole of the United Kingdom. But there are steps that DEFRA can take to reassure the industry, help expand it, help it grow. And I have to say, given those who are in this room, there's a great deal of opportunity to do so and willingness to work together cross-party. Thank you.